Okay, class, I am back again. We're just having a big day of this, and uh, I know you're going to enjoy every doggone minute of it. Okay, so we just finished up the uh, uh, slides on the review of the Rankin cycle, and so um, we have, uh, we've talked about the basic Rankin cycle, the ideal Rankin cycle, uh, the reheat Rankin cycle, the regenerative Rankin cycle, and then this, uh, you know, this is what's going on at one of the units at Kingston. This puts it all together. So this would be the regenerative reheat Rankin cycle. Pretty cool stuff. And so if you look at the boiler here, I can get my pointer up. Um, this would be the main steam flow coming out and it's going into the high pressure turbine. And then we've got one, two extractions, and then we're going back. This would be the reheat steam going back, you know, um, and you can see the pounds per hour. This is 150 megawatt unit. And so we're in 993, uh, uh, 100, almost a million pounds an hour, a little short of that coming out of main steam. Uh, we've taken off a couple extraction flows. Uh, and so we're down to uh, 862,110. Uh, going back into reheat, and so it's going back at 450 uh, PSI. Uh, is it PSI? That's PSIA because that's the 1815. So, yeah, that's PSIA. And so, yeah, we're dropping 45 pounds because this is the, uh, the same flow, but instead of being uh, uh, 640.2 degrees, we're now 1,000 degrees. So we bumped up, uh, what is that, uh, what's that, that would be 60, uh, what, 360 degrees, and you can see the enthalpy change. When we came out of the high pressure turbine, we're 1326.3, and now we're 1522.3. So we picked up that enthalpy difference, that's why we did this, to get that additional energy into the intermediate pressure turbine. Pretty good stuff. Uh, so we see the pressure drop here. Uh, we can look at the feed water heaters now that we have an understanding. So closed feed water, one, two, three are closed feed water heaters, and five, uh, six, and seven are closed feed water heaters, with number four being the de aerator. See, they put it over here. And also notice that we got pumps down here uh, because every time we have a, if you can hear that siren, I didn't do it. <laughs> I don't know who did what, but the gendarmes are after me. Um, so because all this mixes together, and this is going to operate basically at this extraction pressure about 450. Uh, well, let's see, that's the number three. Uh, I take it back. That's 190. Uh, I think the number three is feeding it. Okay. And so we have pumps, and then that's the last, that's the feed water pumps. And so they... They generate enough pressure. Let's see, do they tell us? Uh, they don't give us the pressure. There's the flow. There's the temperature. Uh, well, there's pressure. Pressure, oh, is it? No, I don't see the pressure. It's probably on here someplace, but anyway, you can look for it. Um, but that pumps it all the way back to the boiler pressure, which are, and, and then we have to have significant, it's, it's probably a couple, uh, 2,000 plus pounds coming out of these pumps to get them through all the heat exchangers back to the boiler and make the boiler function properly. Um, okay, this is interesting. So what, what we have here, this is an evaporator, okay? And so we are uh, putting uh, 19,840 uh, pounds per hour. This is our makeup water coming into the system at 70 degrees with an enthalpy of 38 BTUs a pound, not much. And so it's coming in here and see coming out, we have, uh, let's see, it's right here. So there's the same mass flow. And so we have evaporated that uh, and it's 1,080. So it's uh, still pretty low pressure. Oh, I lost my pointer here. Don't keep that thing moving, it disappears. So, so we picked up this enthalpy, and how we did that is we took this extraction steam, this uh, 21,020 pounds per hour at uh, enthalpy 1429, into this in this coil, 
and so we condense it in the coil. We we vaporize this stuff, and so uh, <clears throat> this uh, this amount is going into the deaerator right here, and then this condensate, which is now just uh, 346, is falling into the DA uh, over here. Okay, so that's the makeup water coming in. And so then in the feed water uh, in the deaerating heater, see there, we got a line coming in here. Let's see. So this one is, that's number four. So we've got additional steam flow in here that's coming down. Uh, that's the 1283 uh, and that's actually powering the, the deaerator. So this extraction is to evaporate the makeup water, which goes in here. And then this steam flow is to power the deaerator, which is pretty cool. So anyway, we got a bunch of steam flows coming in. Um, and so all of that, everything coming into this thing, uh, basically mixes. We've got a small vent, which we're not really showing. Uh, and then, so it comes out the bottom. And so that this uh, million uh, 12,940 should be the sum of all of the other masses uh, coming in here. You could check that on your calculator. So anyway, and you can see how the uh, feed water temperature increases. You know, this is coming out of the condenser. I guess, what are we? We're 101 here. Uh, we're 103 here go through the first heater, we're 151.6, and then we're up to 209, and then we're up to, what is it, 255.8, and then we're up to 304.9, and then we're up to 368, and we're up to 446, and is that 485? I can't hardly see what it turns sideways, but anyway, so, all of these feed water, all of this hardware down here is basically to uh, the implementation of the regeneration cycle um, to boost this temperature into the boiler so that we get a higher average temperature during the heat addition, which increases our cycle efficiency. Pretty cool. All right, let's shift gears. Let's look at some homework problems. Or not homework problems, but some example problems, I guess I should say. So, uh, and we'll just go through these. I've used these for years, but I think they're, they, they give you an example. They get you back into your thermo. You can see some numbers. Um, you can read this if you want to. It'd be probably be good to go back into steam tables and see if you can regenerate, you know, find your states, you know, superheated, you know, two phase inside the dome, compressed liquid, whatever. Um, and so, you know, you're going to have to do that on a test. So I would encourage you to go ahead and, uh, you know, hone your skills on these. That's, that's why they've been given to them. So the first one, determine the efficiency of Rankine cycle, utilizing steam as working fluid, uh, in which condenser pressure is 10 kPa. So some of these are in metric units. Most of them are in U.S. units, uh, which I, per I personally prefer. I know you don't. But anyway, so there's some here uh, to please you and some here to please me. Anyway, so 10 kPa is pretty low pressure. Uh, boiler pressure is 2 megapascals. Steam leaves the boiler at saturated vapor. So we're just heating over to the saturation dome and we're going to stop there in this problem. Uh, so we're going to let uh, W sub P denote the work into the pump per unit mass. The fluid flowing, little Q sub L, heat rejected from the working fluid. Uh, that would be in the condenser uh, per unit mass. And so we're going to just uh, solve this around. Uh, we're going to determine uh, the amount of work and uh, efficiency of the cycle. So, you know, uh, a pump, uh, depending on what you know and where you're starting, but we're going to start this one out at the pump. Uh, so let's see. So we know the inlet state, uh, we're told uh, P1 is saturated liquid at uh, 10 kPa. 
So that's our assumption there. And the exit state, uh, I guess here we're gonna assume this is isentropic. Uh, this would be, I guess, ideal, say ideal. And this, is gonna, this is gonna be for the ideal Rankine cycle, okay? And so uh, the first law, that's uh, capital W divided by M dot, is or the, the specific work, uh, the work per unit mass, uh, is just the enthalpy difference. And yeah, so here, here the second law statement, we're declaring it to be isentropic. So S2, the exit entropy is equal to the inlet entropy, S2 and S1 are the same. And so for this condition, uh, we know that the enthalpy difference is the integral from one to two of VDP. And you can you can check that back in your thermal book if you want to, but that's correct. Now, this is what I call the pump trick. So what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna handle pumps, so you need to pay attention and get this. So we're gonna consider the liquid to be incompressible, which it's not a perfect assumption, but it's pretty good. You gotta push water pretty darn hard before you change its uh, density or specific volume very much. And so making that assumption, then we can pull the specific volume through the integral sign and integrate DP, even I can integrate that one, that integrates into P2 minus P1. And so this is what we're going to do for the isentropic, to get the isentropic work. Uh, we're just gonna do a specific volume and we typically take it into at, at state one going in. So that would be the specific volume of saturated liquid at 10 kPa. You can look it up, but it should be 0 .001, uh, 001. And then we take the uh, difference in pressure and you gotta check your units. And I'll tell you the way to make sure um, the, the specific volume is what? Uh, feet cubed, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what is it? Feet, it'd be feet cubed per pound, or meters cubed, I'm sorry, meters cubed per kilogram. These metric units I gotta think about. Um, so that would be meters cubed per kilogram. And if you use KPA for your pressures, then you don't have to do any further conversion. If you use MPA, then you're gonna have to multiply that result by a thousand. So up to you. But what I remember is just use KPA uh, when you calculate pump work and it comes out uh, two kilojoules per kilogram. So that's the enthalpy increase. That's how much it increases as we go through the pump. So then, so we can calculate the exit enthalpy because we know the entering enthalpy, that's from the table, saturated liquid at 10 kPa, that's 191.8. Uh, the delta enthalpy across the pump is two, so we add it on, and so we're 193.8 for the kilojoules per kilogram for the enthalpy exiting the pump. So this little scenario here is what I call the pump trick and you need to know how to do this. So you need to learn this. So study this until you understand it. Okay, so we're gonna go on to the boiler here. And I just wrote the uh, first law down there just for fun. Uh, so the boiler is just the, uh, the boiler, the heat added in the boiler, little Q sub H, uh, per unit mass is just the enthalpy difference. If you want to know the total heat added, then you have to multiply the enthalpy difference by the total mass flow through the boiler, which is pretty simple. But we're going to work this uh, per per kilogram flowing uh, through the cycle. And so we just calculated H2 above from the pump trick, and uh, H1 is the saturated uh, enthalpy of saturated vapor at two megapascals. So that's a straight look up from the table. Get your tables out, look it up, and find a number uh, 2799.5 or so. You may have a different book that has slightly different tables, but it should be perilously close to that number. Okay, so now we know uh, how much heat uh, per kilogram that the boiler is putting in. So that's uh, 2605.7 kilojoules per kilogram flowing through our system. All right, so let's go on, go back up. 
this. Okay, so we're gonna proceed on to our control volume around the turbine. And since it's a simple turbine, no extractions, we just have uh, uh, mass flowing in uh, at three and out at four, and it's isentropic. So we know S3 is equal to S4. So what we have to do is determine the uh, exit state. Uh, so we, in, we, we know that it's gonna uh, be two phase. Uh, it's gonna have a quality less than one because we started at saturation and we're gonna drop straight down uh, to our lower pressure and so we're dropping into the saturation dome. So we know we're gonna to have to calculate the quality. So this is how we do it. Uh, since it's constant entropy, uh, we look at the entropy at three and it's 6.3409 and that's equal to the entropy of four. And so uh, right here, we've got the entropy. Uh, this is at the lower pressure. This is at 10 kPa. And so this is the entropy of saturated liquid plus uh, the quality at four and the 7.509 is the entropy of saturated vapor minus the entropy of saturated liquid at 10 kPa or the entropy of vaporization. And so with simple equation and we solve it for X4. So we're 75, uh, 0.88% uh, vapor. So we're 24.12% liquid coming out of that state. And then we simply uh, use the same expression for uh, uh, calculating uh, any property of a wet mixture. So the, enth the enthalpy at four is the enthalpy at, uh, of a liquid plus the quality times the enthalpy of vaporization. So again, the 2392.8 is the enthalpy of saturated vapor minus the enthalpy of saturated liquid from the steam table. Usually that number is tabulated. You don't even have to do the subtraction. But when you do that math, we get 2007.5. So that's the exit enthalpy. That's the steam coming out at low pressure, coming out of the turbine. So the specific work on the turbine is uh, the 2799.5 minus 2007.5 or so we're getting out seven, 792 kilojoules uh, per kilogram. That's the work that's produced by the turbine. That's not the network of the cycle because the pump, uh, we have to put some work into the pump. And so what we get out of the cycle is what the turbine produces minus what the pump consumes, okay? Um, and that was true. We've already calculated that. I recall that number from the other side of the slide was two kilojoules per kilogram. So not much. Okay. Uh, and then we go to the condenser. So, uh, the condenser, <clears throat> we are, uh, leaving the condenser saturated liquid at 10 kPa. So we know that enthalpy we're entering, uh, Entering on the condenser is the exit on the turbine. So that's the 2007.5. So the difference in those two is how much heat we're rejecting from the cycle. And so we're rejecting 1815.7 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. So gosh, what are we putting in? That's eight, about 1816. Where's the boiler over here? We're putting in 2606 and we're rejecting 18 of it. You see why the Efficiency so bad, we're throwing away most of the heat. Okay, so all that's per unit mass. Now we go to the uh, efficiency calculations. So we've got the network. Uh, we can do it two ways. It's the net heat. Remember, for a cycle, net heat is equal to net work. So the net heat is what comes, uh, what we put in in the boiler minus what we reject in the condenser. Uh, divided by the, the costly heat input, which is what goes into the boiler. So it's QH minus QL divided by QH, or we can take the net work, which is what comes out of the turbine minus what goes into the pump, divide that by uh, Q sub H. 
So either way, we get the, we'll get the same result if we work the problem right. So there, the numbers they punch there are for the turbine. The turbine is making uh, 792. Uh, the pump is taking two, so we take that off and we divide by the boiler heat input of 2605.7. So our cycle is 30.3% efficient. Okay. Uh, the other thing you can do is plug in the enthalpies for these. So uh, the uh, H3 minus H2 is the boiler input. Uh, H four minus H1 is the condenser. So you subtract those off and then divide by the boiler again, H3 minus H2. And that's gonna be equal to H3 minus H4, which is the turbine, minus H2 minus H1, which is the pump, again, divided by the boiler. And so you see those numbers plugged in and we get the same. Okay, so I hope that's uh, pretty good. Um, I think I'll stop this one to keep them from getting so big and then uh, I will start another recording with another example.